Well, hello and welcome to uh, episode 17. You can't see the number there of your divine purpose devotional. And uh, this chapter from the book that I'm, I'm taking you through, which you're welcome to buy or not buy. I, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you that you have to have this, but you will find it very helpful. It's an apostolic field guide for every believer. And I, chapter 17 is an apostolic culture. And uh, many people will probably know that I do love to teach on culture and uh, learned uh, quite a bit of this over the years through strategic planning and working in different environments. But one thing I'm certain of is that culture is one of the keys for our world today and where it would take a hundred years to build a business um, or a brand uh, years ago today. Uh, it doesn't take that long. And one of the keys to growth and increase is creating the right culture in the organization for the product. But here's the thing. We need to really understand culture in the context of the apostolic and an apostolic move of God. And the verse that I love to use is 2 Peter 1, 4, in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature. Uh, that for me is a description of the culture of heaven, the divine nature, the way heaven does things. And when we understand the way that heaven does things, we can bring that to earth. You see, culture is really about creating the ground in which stuff grows. Agriculture is a combination of two words that come together that talk about growing things really in fields. That's basically what it means. When you understand what you want to grow, you know what kind of culture you need. My personal belief is that the apostolic or apostle ships are about culture. Uh, we very often, the denominational will gather around what we agree over. And uh, that's okay. It's not a problem. Uh, but it can lead to division. And of course, denominationalism really means divided nations. But I believe that apostleships and the apostles gather around relationship and our primary relationship, which we gather around is Christ. And therefore our goal is to be Christ-like. And if we can create the culture in which each of us can move to being closer to more like Christ, then that is the key. And it's not about putting the line in the middle of the room and saying, you're either this or you're that. The real key is, are you on a journey to being Christ-like and embracing culture? If you leave an organization alone, culture will develop. It will create its own culture. The key is to develop intentional culture. Culture for me is the way we do things around here or the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. And of course, we get our Bible because generations of believers told stories about the way they do things. A longer description would be the beliefs, the practices, the traditions, the behaviors by which a people group cope with their world. Historically, of course, we thought of culture more geographically, more to do with ethnic groups or regions where a people group would go and would, would you know, establish their society. They would bring some of their culture with them. And we see this, don't we? When we see the effect of Portugal um, on Brazil or Spain on Argentina, we see that uh, overlap of taking food and cultures with them. And that's what we are to do, to bring the culture of heaven to earth. And in the very word apostle comes from the Romans who would send their lead person, their apostle, on a ship to another place to make that place like Rome. In other words, to behave like Rome, to have a culture like Rome. So culture is powerful. And when you understand what you want to grow, you'll know what culture you need. Because Jesus is the great example and he created that incredible culture amongst his 12 for those three years, a culture of empowerment, which left two of them walking out of the room, so to speak, saying, arguing about who was the greatest. We might cringe at that, but the truth is that that's the culture that created the world changes. It also, of course, created a Judas, but that's okay. You see, we, we would never have got the 11 world changes if Jesus hadn't created the culture of empowerment. And, and many of us have been afraid over the years to risk another Judas. But the tragedy is we've not raised the world changes 
that we believe for. And that truly is what the apostolic is about. You see, to create an apostolic culture, I'm influenced by an apostle. We've seen that. That's Jesus. I'm therefore apostolic. I therefore change the way that think, I think I behave differently and therefore I create an apostolic culture around me. See, culture takes what we believe, lives out that behavior, and we create the culture. If we believe that God is good, we, we live that out. We talk about him being good. We declare that. We see his goodness. And the end result is a culture of the goodness of God. And uh, it involves storytelling. You know, if you want a culture of miracles, tell stories about miracles. If you want to see healings, create a culture that God heals. Give opportunity for healing every moment and in every situation that you meet somebody who is sick and who needs breakthrough. And, and so I just want to encourage all of you. You know, I always divide it into four. This, this, you know, like many of the things I teach, culture enables things to grow. That's the first thing it does. It's like the Petri dish of our school days. The second is that it protects us. It's like the umbrella or the siesta in Spain that protects us from the harsh effects of the life that we are living. In our case, the harsh effects of life on earth. Thirdly, it gives us the right lens to look through first, like the telephoto lens. It helps us to see. And like the 12 spies who went in, two of them saw big fruit and little devils. It helps us to see with heaven's eyes. And fourthly, it's like the yeast that lifts everything up, that raises everything. Culture does that. And so I want to encourage you, create, work out where you want to grow, create a culture to grow it. Work out what you need to be protected from, Create a culture that protects you. Work out how you want to see with heaven's eyes and work out how you want to lift everything up. Encouragement is a great example of that last one. So the apostolic culture, in many respects, coming pretty much in the middle of this book and this study, uh, it couldn't be more, better placed because of the power of understanding culture. So as you look across your sphere of influence, what three to five cultures are most important to you? What culture does your environment most need? And what will you declare to reinforce those cultures? He's good. He's heals. He's generous. He speaks. All of those will create cultures of his goodness, his generosity, his healing, the fact that he speaks and he prophesies today. And what stories run through your sphere of influence? Do you need to change those stories and introduce some other ones? I guarantee this. Every organization can benefit from this. Start every meeting with good news and it will change the culture of your organization. I want to bless you today and bless you to create heaven's culture around you, whoever you are, whatever you do and wherever you go.